So today I'm in Jahangirpuri, which is north of Delhi, and I have with me here Mayank and Akshay. They are the founding members of EFIL. Uh, they manufacture the EV charging stations, and uh, we would like to know from Mayank and Akshay like how this journey started. So yes, uh, this journey started uh, somewhat around in 2018. Okay. Uh, I, along with my co-founder Rupak, uh, we started uh, brainstorming on different ideas on uh, like how to work on the uh, like EV ecosystem which was a budding thing at that point of time. So we started a lot of discussion, uh, we discussed about uh, EV conversion kits, we discussed about the charging domain, we discussed about a completely uh, new scratch, new uh, like a two wheeler or three wheeler or something. So then uh, a discussion uh, went on couple of months and in 2017 and 2018 and then we uh, had another like Rupak uh, had a ex colleague Raghuveer, and we started with Raghuveer uh, as a first member of the team. So we uh, bought a couple of chargers from Indian OEM and uh, Type 2 chargers, particularly. And we installed uh, on the highways and a couple of chargers at the other community uh, centers. And we observed the revenue or the feedback from the market. We understood that the CPO business uh, is going to take a lot of time to generate revenue and to be sustainable. And uh, we observed that a lot of hardware issues were there in the product. We, we understood that the application is not good, the hardware needs improvement, and there's a pain uh, to get the charger installed. Yeah. Right. So, and of course, uh, the business as a CPO is going to take a longer time. So many of the charging, I mean, uh, CPOs were also importing it from China. Right? Yeah, so that is also a major pain for the end customer of the CPOs in terms of the service support. Right. right. So these all reasons uh, made us pivot from a CPO standpoint of view to a manufacturing or, or a, a technology uh, uh, solution provider. What we did smartly that we integrate all three as a single platform. Okay. We ourselves face that if, if you want to start a charging station, you have to get uh, like connected with three different people to get the solution from uh, each of them. So right now we have an in-house developed hardware product with a smart uh, uh, onboard uh, control cards and a reliable uh, tested product. Mm -hmm. So the charger is there. Then we have developed an in-house IoT telematics application for the individual CPOs or maybe we can, uh, if required, any CPO want a white label application. So we are providing the white label solution to them as well. So now the hardware is taken care, the application is seamlessly working and very uh, user friendly right. and the installation commissioning and the service support is also taken care by the EFIL team. Right. So these all three things are taken on single platform and we are providing these all three as a solution, as a single pit stop. Wow. So nice. th that's, that's the, the, the little bit story of the charging domain. So Akshay, tell us something about this Bharat AC001 charging and who are usually, who are the consumers usually using this? Yes, so this is a Bharat AC001, which is the XO0 series for us. We are supplying these chargers to fleets, like overnight charging and societies, like where people can charge like overnight or more than five, six hours. And plus this can charge three vehicles at a time, parallel, three Nexon, three two wheelers, four wheelers, all can be charged with this. Okay. With our application, it's a touchscreen display. You can just monitor everything with an application. So if I come with my electric car and I plug in, and do I have to use the EFIL app and what's the process otherwise? So the process is pretty simple. Like you can download EFIL app from Android and App Store. Okay. And once you download that, you can see the QR codes on the screen for individual sockets. Whichever socket you would like to utilize, you will just scan the QR code of it, pay the amount, for the amount you would like to charge okay. or the unit you want to charge. And then once you uh, you can once that charger is booked, you can just plug in your plug here, okay. and then start charging from the application itself. And all the data would be at your application, and you can start stop from your application it's, uh, itself. Okay, so you can even decide how much you want to charge. Yes, yes, just yes, stop it there. yes. So actually, this is the X2 public charging. And so, who are your usual consumers uh, for this uh, charging? Yes, so this is an X2 Type 2 7 kilowatt charger, which can move up to 7, 22 kilowatt. So this is majorly used at a place where people spend more than five, six hours, like a hotel where people are staying at a destinations, or a society where people are charging, or basically at office spaces also, okay. commercial spaces at the parking, where people spend more than five, six hours. Over there, this charger suits the best. And plus, this is the version one. We are coming with a version two with a touchscreen display and all features available in that, which is more advanced than theirs, so okay. that's in, in the pipeline. So Akshay, this, this as I can see, I mean, we have a lot of electric car owners in our group and a lot of them already have like a charging cable or something. So uh, if they want an extra one, this is what they could use, right? Uh, definitely, the, when you buy an electric vehicle, you get a portable charger with it. Right. But 
to have a different extent like you have a factory office or different places right. so you can plan like a 7 kilowatt charger out there and again it can work with rfid also plus you can utilize the same charger as a public charger also you, if you have a wi-fi out there right. so this works with the oc protocol so this can also put an efill application so if you want to buy these efill ac chargers you can go to their website efillelectric.com also you can find these two on amazon so Mayank, uh, as I know that you've been distributing this, these uh, units all over India, so uh, is there franchising, what is the... Yeah, so uh, I mean, we wanted to give a good service support to the end customer because we felt the need of a uh, good service support ourselves in the initial when we started as CPO. So that's how we uh, pivoted uh, a kind of a sales strategy and we started onboarding franchisee partners pan india so right now we are working with two kind of franchisee partners so one is master franchisee partner which is a kind of a straight level uh, franchisee we are giving away and a unit franchisee partner which is majorly focused on the city level within the under master franchisee basically mm -hmm. so the, the role is divided in such a way that the master franchisee uh, dedicated team is uh, there who will take care of the service support or installation and commissioning for the chargers within the state and we are training their uh, service team uh, to get to give the uh, service to the end customer in a quick or better way so that's how the service and the franchisee and the uh, network is planned across India and right now uh, we have seven master franchises in, in different states like uh, UP, Delhi, Telangana, Maharashtra, uh, Rajasthan and, and these are a couple of Gujarat. So mm -hmm. these all master franchises have, have uh, already been onboarded. But right now 40% of our sales is uh, coming in uh, from the franchisee partners and uh, the other 30-40% uh, through CPOs and then uh, another 10-15% uh, through the inbound or outbound marketing uh, from the websites. So, Mike, as we know that you know a lot of the charge CPOs have been uh, importing a lot of uh, these charging units from uh, China. So, but uh, what is your strategy on the localization of all these AC uh, chargers? See, uh, I mean, our all AC charging products. So, you can consider like 95% of the product is localized already. Right. We are just importing the displays, touchscreen displays uh, that are imported, and apart from that, there are few components like the ICs the microcontrollers and a couple of small small component which are put into the uh, the main control board yeah. so at component level we are uh, importing few of the components are imported through the sales channels of the uh, ic manufacturers for example uh, microchip is there for example uh, phoenix is there so apart from that the displays are directly con currently imported in the ic charger particularly this bharat ac001 this is again uh, like a Bharat standard, which is not there in China, so this cannot be imported uh, from China, right? right? So, so, so this is totally, totally made in India. Just the display is being imported, right? And when you talk about the Type Two chargers, so earlier we had to import the the cable uh, or the gun or the Type Two gun connector, uh, but now the connector is also localized by a couple of uh, suppliers who are there in India. Wow, man! I mean, now we can get this much cheaper, right? As you said, yeah, right. Because earlier it was much uh, expensive to yeah. import it. So right now this uh, Type Two. Uh, AC cable, so they have been localized by a uh, couple of Indian suppliers. Nice. And further, uh, the discussions are going on, the development is also going on at a couple of vendors for the DC uh, connectors also. Okay. So, further, we are expecting the CCS2 DC, DC connector to be localized uh, within next six to eight months. So, uh, so th this is all about the AC chargers 95% of, of the, uh, the components are already localized. So, for DC chargers, a couple of things are still to be localized. For example, like I shared, uh, the DC connector, CCS2 connector, mm -hmm. is getting localized now okay so uh, so currently that is imported first of all and the display is again imported and apart from that there's a the power module which is a ac to dc converter so right now there is no reliable uh, uh, player or the vendor partner for a 30 kilowatt or a 15 kilowatt power module manufacturer in india reliable manufacturers are missing uh, from india so that is also something which has to be imported right now so apart from these three things everything is already localized so it's amazing to see that in a very short span of time, like in two years, we have seen localization of these AC chargers and uh, players like uh, Ifil, Mayank and Akshay, they have actually made this happen. And now we have these AC chargers completely made in India, hopefully by 2023, end of 2023. So now we're doing a demo of uh, EFIL 30 kilowatt CCS DC fast charger and uh, I have Akshay here with me and we're going to start charging the next one EV Max, Max. 
So you can just book the charger from right. the application. Right. You can see Rajinder Nagar charger. Just book charger as an option. Select the vehicle you are charging so that the connector is aligned with that charger. Let's say if we are charging uh, Nexon EV and let's say 100 rupees is something you want to top up okay. with. So book now. The charger is booked now for me. Okay. And now I can just uh, click start charging here. It will show the charges available. When I will press in this, this is a DC port. Now, as, as I mentioned in that, it would change to preparing. That means the vehicle is connected to the charger. Right. And I can just click start charging here. Now, okay, you can hear the fan is working from that. Yes, so it is mentioning it. Let, let Don't remove, plug out the gun. It is uh, you know, communicating. And right. now the charging just started. You can see the vehicle is 84%. Mm -hmm. What is the BMS demand it is asking? And what the charger is supplying? Okay. So, yeah. You can see the charge time, the device temperature. You yeah. can see how much time remaining if you have booked the time. Yeah. And it's showing what is the voltage, what is the current. Right, right. And the multiplication is the kilowatt overall. But important is the demand voltage and yeah. current. Now yeah. you can see vehicle is demanding roughly um, 82 or 30, uh, 82. Yeah. And now it is supplying 54 amps of, of the current because it's already 80-84% percent charge, so it is optimizing. Now it's from 84 to 85 percent is already run. Yeah. Like you can see the amount used with charging amount and the battery percentage of, of your car. Yeah. I'm going to stop it, so I will just click stop. It will ask me whether by mistake I have not touched it. So I'll confirm that I want to stop it. Now the charging demand is cut and, and the vehicle is, is charged till the point I wanted to. So another unique feature of the e-fill charging station is that you don't need the app and you don't need the RFID token. You can just use your credit card and go ahead and ch start charging. Yeah, so it's, it's basically simple. You link your any credit card or debit card which has an NFC option okay. linked to the charger. Once you can connect it to one server, it will connect to all the chargers available in the network. Okay. So w what you have to do is basically just select the RFID card and add an option. You can scan the QR code which is available on the charger. Once it does, it shows that you have to swipe your card to you know, uh, register it once. Okay. So you can go to any charger available when you are charging. You can just tap the card and it will uh, automatically add here on, on your server. Yeah, so this card is actually already added. So as I tap, so it starts charging to the uh, option here. That's amazing. I mean, I don't really need to download an app and wait to install it and then register. Just go ahead and start charging. So, so it's a one-time process. You do it one time and then right. you have to have wallet money. Anytime you just go to a site, plug out your card and just tap it and it'll start charging your vehicle. You don't have to book it. You don't have to time it or kilowatt you have to add. It's just a RFID option. That which, Basically, it's an option which is RFID in your pocket. Right. <laughs> so, but then how do you uh, stop charging? So you do it again, from the... If you want to do it, you can just tap the RFID tap card on, on the charger and it'll stop charging. So, I'm going to try using my card and try stopping it. <laughs> As you can see, it doesn't work because this is still not no. registered. No. Okay. For the same card, I can just tap it. Uh, yeah, it read it and now it is charger stopping. Now it will go down to zero and it will stop. As you can see, the BMS demand is zero now. That's it. So it is, clo it is closing the loop now. Okay. Well, basically, it's a one-time process. You can do it any charge. Let's say you go to a, any place for charging. It's a one-time process you can do there. Right. Once your card is registered to the servers, so you can do it the same process any charger of EFILS. EFIL is the only manufacturer which offers a 15 kilowatt CCS2 charger also. So let's uh, talk to uh, Mayank about the same. So the, the, the whole idea behind uh, having a 15 kilowatt uh, CCS2 charger was that, I mean, people don't get uh, 30 kilowatt connection easily, quite easily. So they might have to get an additional transformer requirement uh, to be done or additional, uh, a huge uh, investment is there for setting up the electrical infrastructure. So the thought was that 15 kilowatt can be easily taken without having uh, additional transformer requirement. Yes. So the cost cut downs. So this was the whole idea to start working on the 15 kilowatt. Now, since uh, the penetration is as we are moving forward with the bigger battery packs in the vehicle, Nexon Max coming up. So the, the charging rate is also going higher. So what we have now uh, given as a, as an additional uh, benefit to the customer that we have from 15 kilowatt, we have moved on to the upgradable 15 kilowatt. Wherein what we are doing, we are uh, making a 15 kilowatt charger in a 30 kilowatt charger uh, 
uh, housing and all major SPDs are kept for the 30 kilowatt. And what we are doing, we are giving an upgrade uh, based on the customer requirement. So customer can start with a 15 kilowatt charger based on their current uh, available load and based on the demand or based on the revenue. And if they feel that the charger is, is, is uh, working good, the demand is good, uh, people are coming and charging the vehicle regularly. So they can opt for an upgrade. So we can just uh, change the power module and a couple of uh, components and they can just uh, have the same charger now working as a 30 kilowatt fast charger. So that's something uh, which is uh, unique what in, in, in uh, our offering, right? And further, uh, as, a, uh, uh, as, a, as a tech enabled, as a tech focused company, further we are working on many more upgrades, many more features like auto charge is one of them, which we have seen uh, in a couple of uh, manufacturers uh, there in India or uh, like in Europe as well. So we are already working on that and hopefully within next uh, three to six months, we'll be ro ro rolling out the update for the existing charges also hopefully. So this this is something very unique about EFIL that you know, you can actually uh, get a 15 kilowatt, test the market and then you can actually upgrade to a 30 kilowatt as per uh, the requirement of your business. Yeah. And there is something more that I would like to uh, touch on that they mentioned about the software updates. Uh, let's just tell me something more. Yeah, so as a tech focused company, we keep on updating these firmware and hardware on our side also. We keep testing it. When OTA, we keep updating the firmware and software part of the charger. So it, it helps the EV user to optimize their you know, charging session and charging right. as an ecosystem for for them experience for them so as uh, as you can see we're very impressed by the efill charging infrastructure that they have been providing for charging stations and uh, if you're an ev owner definitely download the efill app and if you're a business owner the links are mentioned below you can send them a query and you can get the uh, get started on the charging stations for yourself